and I'd like to welcome you to episode number 26 of Nicole's Weekly Words. We are really racing through this. Uh, we've nearly reached the end of the alphabet. We're already up to letter R. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with me and for um, joining me for the 25 previous episodes we've had together. I hope that you have really been enjoying learning with me and that, yeah, you're remembering your five new words every week and using them and still using the words from many, many, many weeks ago now. <laughs> um, as I said today, what I'd like to do is to focus on the letter R. Um, there's lots of wonderful words uh, that begin with R, and I've chosen five which I think sound really impressive and which you will definitely learn something new with, and yeah, which hopefully you'll enjoy learning and enjoy using as well. This week I've chosen the word rapport, ramble, rummage, rationalize, and resilience. So good. <laughs> Before we begin, do not worry, okay? There will be a worksheet that you can download directly from my Facebook group, The Successful English Learner by Sydney English Teacher. And you'll have all of the words, all of the meanings, all of the example sentences right there for you. Um, so don't stress about having to write absolutely everything down. You won't miss a thing. Just sit back, relax, listen and enjoy. Um, let yourself, your, you know, let your brain absorb the information. And later on, go to the group, download the worksheet, maybe even watch the video again. And then you can take your own notes, write your own example sentences and really solidify that information, make it your own, you know, burn it into your brain. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, let's begin. The first word for this week is the word rapport. 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 Your turn. Yeah, great. So the word rapport, I'm sure you've heard it before. We use it a lot. Um, when we're talking about groups of people or meeting people for the first time or when we're talking about, you know, um, starting a new job or going to a job interview, you hear this word all the time. Do you know what it means? Well, let me tell you. A rapport is when there is a friendly, natural positive relationship, okay? When two or more people just click, you know, their personalities match so well and they get on so well almost immediately. So as soon as they meet, they click, they get on well, they enjoy each other's company, they can relax, be themselves, no acting whatsoever, no nerves, no stress. They can just be themselves and have fun. That's rapport. So look, if people have a good rapport, it means they agree with each other, you know. They understand each other quite well. They have similar views, uh, similar interests perhaps. So it's really easy for them to communicate with each other, you know, and to feel comfortable with each other. That's rapport. You know, they can understand each other's ideas, each other's feelings, each other's views, opinions really, really, really well. And they feel comfortable enough to communicate easily with each other without the need for acting or pretending, you know, you can just ah, be yourself. <laughs> so rapport, that connection, that instant, um, what should I say, um, knowing instantly that you get on well, knowing instantly that, hey, I like this person, they're similar to me, you know, knowing that you, you could have a really nice friendship with this person. That's rapport or a good rapport. 
Let me give you some examples. It is so important to have a good rapport with your co-workers. Otherwise, working together is almost impossible. Or they had an instant rapport and knew that they would be good friends for life. Yeah. <laughs> Number three, she is such a great boss and has a brilliant rapport with all her staff, making them all feel really confident and valued. Number four, your success in this new role depends fully on your ability to create an instant rapport with the other team members. There you go. That's rapport. Let's move on to number two. And I've chosen the word ramble. Ramble. Can you say that? Yeah. So look, if a person rambles, it means they talk and talk and talk and talk, or they write and write and write and write at great length. You know, they just go on and on and on. And it's really in a way that is a little bit confused, I suppose. Um, they don't communicate clearly. You know, they get off the topic or they talk about things that might not really be important or relevant. You know, they're off the topic. Um, that's ramble, you know, just on and on and on and on. And the person listening or reading is a little bit frustrated because they want to get back to the point. They don't want to sit and listen or sit and read things that really aren't relevant. <laughs> so look, rambling can be either in spoken form or in written form. You know, and it's when people talk or write without a clear aim, without a clear direction of where they're going, you know, of what they want to achieve. They just go on and on and on. And I suppose that people who are listening or reading don't really have an idea what they're talking about or what they mean. You know, it doesn't really make much sense. Um, it's not clear, it's not to the point, they go off the subject, you know. They themselves are quite confused in writing and in talking. So imagine what the listener or the reader thinks. Ah, oh, utter confusion. <laughs> so look, if someone rambles on, it could be quite boring or even annoying for the listener or the reader. And they'll lose interest in reading or listening, you know, if you ramble on. You don't want that. You know, the point of what you're saying has to be clear. You have to keep someone's interest. Otherwise, it's not real communication, is it? So to ramble or to ramble on. Just go on and on and on and on and on. I will stop. I don't want to ramble. <laughs> Let me give you some examples. Number one, sorry for rambling. I'll get back to the main point of what I'm wanting to say. <laughs> Number two, I wouldn't recommend reading this book. The story rambles on and on and it's really difficult to read. Number three, I'm absolutely exhausted you know, she rambled on for hours during, during our car trip and she was talking about anything and everything. There was no escape. <laughs> there you go. That's a funny one. <laughs> Number four. Are you ready? We've got the word rummage. Can you say that? Rummage. Rummage. Yeah, great. So look, when you rummage, it means that you search for something in a really unsystematic way, you know, in a really untidy way. You're looking for something quite carelessly. There's no goal, there's no aim, there's no method, I suppose. You're just moving things around really quickly and making a big mess, I suppose. There's no system. There's no planning in the way that you search and you know you'll most likely not find what you're looking for because you're just ah, quite crazy you know searching 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 like that instead of taking a breath thinking about it doing it slowly 
following, you know, a systematic method. So, <laughs> rummage. <laughs> so look, if you rummage, you're basically just moving the papers around really quickly uh, or looking through your handbag quite rushed, you know, aimlessly. You're searching for something quickly without a proper plan, basically. You know, you're just moving things around in the hope that what you're looking for might turn up, might appear suddenly, you know, not because you've looked for it properly, but because you're like, ah, oh, there it is. That was luck. <laughs> so rummage. Number one, she rummaged through all the drawers looking for a pen. So you can just picture her going a bit crazy. Where's a pen? Where's a pen? Where's Oh, there's a pen. <laughs> Number two, he rummaged through the house all weekend trying to find the receipt so that he could return the damaged phone. Oh, no. <laughs> or I always rummage through my handbag, but I never find what I need. Sounds like me. <laughs> Number four. We've got the word rationalize. Rationalize. Your turn. Rationalize. Great. And look, if you rationalize something, it means that you try to explain or to give a reason for maybe your behavior or for your decisions. You rationalize something. So you're trying to think of reasons, I suppose, to try and explain why you did something or why you maybe said something. And you're trying to make other people or even yourself <laughs> understand your thinking, understand your reason behind those actions, your reason behind those words. So it's really about that explanation, the reason, showing, I suppose, the step-by-step -step method to your thinking, to your decision-making process, I suppose. Rationalize. Number one, she rationalized the cost of her expensive new shoes by saying that she needs them for the work conference next week. Sounds like every woman I know. <laughs> so you can just imagine there, she's trying to explain to herself and maybe to her husband <laughs> why she spent so much money, why she needs those particular shoes. <laughs> Number two, he rationalized his decision by convincing himself that he was helping others. Number three, I spent a lot of time writing in my diary as a young girl in an attempt to rationalize my feelings. Or number four, she tried to rationalize her son's behavior by blaming it on the influence of the other children. <laughs> there you go. Rationalize. And finally, word number five for this week is the word resilience. Resilience. Your turn. Resilience. That's it. And look, resilience is, simply put, the ability to recover or to easily adjust after change or after bad luck. So the ability to recover or adjust easily when there's been a lot of change or bad luck. Simple. <laughs> so it's the ability to be happy or maybe the ability to be successful again after something difficult or after something bad has happened. You know, so it's really returning to a positive frame of mind after a negative experience. That's resilience. You know, it's the ability to go back to normal, I suppose, or to adjust or recover easily after maybe being sick, 
after having an operation perhaps, after having a difficult life experience or a major life change. It's that ability like this to adjust, to make the most of the new situation, to be positive and to recover, I suppose. Does that make sense? Yeah, look, resilience important skill to have for all of us um, especially in the last 12 months with a global pandemic you know we have all proven that we have resilience we have great resilience because we have adjusted to a new normal to a new life to a new way of living and doing things so yeah congratulations you all have a lot of resilience some example sentences her resilience under such difficult circumstances is a real credit to her. Or, this is an exercise in human resilience. Take it as a learning experience. Or, as I just said before, you all display such impressive resilience after a difficult 12 months where our world has completely changed. <laughs> there you go. So they are our words for this week. We've got the word rapport, <laughs> ramble, rummage, rationalize, and resilience. I hope you really enjoyed learning them with me. Your job now is to go and practice and make sure that you use these words as often as possible. Write some sentences, you know, have conversations with people asking about resilience or rationalizing or rummaging. <laughs> Ask people questions using these words. Look out for these words when you're reading the newspaper or the news. You know, listen for these words when you're watching TV or listening to the radio. They're used all the time. You'll be surprised. Um, but yeah, above all, use them yourself. Write some of your own sentences, practicing them. Print out the worksheet. Look at my example sentences and use them to help you write your own. So yeah, there we go. Rapport, ramble, rummage rationalize and resilience. Have a fabulous day and thank you so much for listening today and for joining me for episode 26. I hope you come back next week for episode 27. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Bye.